Hello, my name is Stanislav Asovsky. I'm a doctor of musical arts and I want to talk about a prototype of an innovative navigating ultrasonic assisting device for the blind which I made. Okay, the first demonstration will be navigating inside a building. So literally it's uh, the School of Music, University of Wisconsin Medicine. This is Yeji Kim. Yeji Kim is visually impaired and she will help me to show the device. Hi, Yeji. Hello. Okay, as you can see, uh, the device itself is mounted on a bicycle helmet and in front, uh, this blue thing, it's um, an electrostatic transducer, ultrasonic, and to the left and right you see a couple of uh, ultrasonic microphones. So, Yeji is wearing uh, ordinary headphones and her task will be to just walk according to the curves of the corridor and just navigate there. Okay, let's get started. So the task is not to kick anything and as you may see Yeji is not having her white cane or her beloved doggy at the moment. She tries solely to rely upon the device and she has had only about 10 minutes of training so far in her life. Door. Yeah, you're doing good. Okay, let's move on. We have a modern war right turn. Mm -hmm. Some door. Yeah. And mm. Do you want to say that the door sounds differently? Some door again. Yeah. And wall. So could and you door. just try to explain uh, what's the difference between a wall and the door? Door sounds lower than wall. Lower. Okay. This is also what? some kind of door. Okay, now I'll ask Yeji to tell me the difference between several materials which we have here, since uh, all of them have a different density and different uh, texture. I believe that I presume and hope that they will sound differently. So what we have here is a very very used piece of paper which has seen better Show days. Me. Definitely, this one. Okay. We have a an ordinary glass jar, this one. Okay. And we have uh, my beloved and favorite affliction shirt. Okay. So I will show Yeji all these three things in absolutely arbitrary order, and you just try to tell me the order okay, back. Fine. Okay. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. First. Okay. Uh, second. Okay. And the third. I think the first was a kind of fabric like, so it was a shirt, and then second was, I think, the paper, and third was, I think, cluster. Exactly. Okay, fine. So let me do it again, okay. different order, okay? Mm -hmm. First one. Mm -hmm. uh, second one. 
Mm -hmm. And the last one. Okay. I think the first one was, uh, if I'm not wrong, then it's class jar. Mm -hmm. And second one was, I think, your shirt. Yeah. Uh, third one was uh, like uh, paper. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you, Yeji. Great you. job. <laughs> the last, the third demonstration will be the demonstration of the perception of movement. This device is capable of detecting moving objects and provides its user with information proportional to the speed and vector of the moving object. Okay? So, Yeji, I will uh, move my hand somewhere about and do something and you just try to tell me what am I doing, okay? Okay. Okay. You approach it to, slowly approach it to my face. Okay. You just wave very quickly. Mm -hmm. A little slower waving, I think. And so you move away from my face, very quickly, I think. Okay. So you just uh, uh, approach me and then move away, keep like... Uh, How quickly? Like uh, not very quick, but not very slow, like... Okay. And then you move to my right side. Mm -hmm. And then kind of waving. Okay. Oh, approach to me. And then quickly move away. Uh, waving again. Not very quick, but not very slow. So now I'll try to wave like different di distance from your face and you just tell me whether I'm waving close to you mm -hmm. or far from you, okay? It's very close. It's a little further. Like middle way, not very far. Close. Mm -hmm. Oops. Closer! Very close. Okay, thank you, Yeji. Yeah, thank you. The device uses the same principle which is widely utilized in wild nature. The principle of ultrasonic echolocation which is used by dolphins and bats and some other animals. The device makes it possible for the operator basically to see through the ears. My rationale for that was that the animals, at least the animals which I know, that rely on echolocation are capable of producing quite a wide range of communicating sounds. They have quite a wide vocabulary. And then I thought, okay, we humans have the most sophisticated means of vocal communication. We have language. We can distinguish between many, many quite sophisticated sounds. And why we cannot echolocate them? Perhaps our brain is potentially ready for echolocation also, and then I understood that the frequencies, audio frequencies, which are optimal for echolocation, lie in an ultrasonic range, and we people cannot perceive and produce ultrasound. And then I thought, okay, if we are given an ability to produce and perceive ultrasound, which is optimal for echolocation, perhaps we could also learn how to echolocate. And that's what led me to this device. I did some research and found out some quite promising article which proposed that visual cortex of blind people after some time, after some training, reacted on audio clues. So this is a device. The prototype looks like that. It's quite small, as you can see. Since it's a prototype, it's not framed. It's just basically a board, several boards. Quite small. There is a number of devices available today, assistive devices for the blind people, which are claimed to be based on the same principle. So basically these devices are uh, nothing else but simple distance meters. Uh, these devices produce an ultrasonic pulse and measure the time between the pulse being produced and the reflection being received. And basing, basing on this, Timing these devices provide by means of either vibration or some pitch, they provide the user by an information that certain object is some distance away. But what is this object? Whether it's a tree or a car, 
whether it's small or big, whether it's soft or hard, there is no difference. These devices are quite stupid. So basically they reduce the whole wall, the whole multitude of things we have around to a simple obstacle. But the world is not an obstacle. It's the world, right? One more flaw which all of these devices have is that all of them are descriptive. They don't let the operator to perceive the world herself or himself. They don't make it possible for the operator to make her or his own judgments and decisions. They just describe something. It can be compared to a situation in a restaurant. Imagine that you come to a restaurant and you order a steak. And sometime later, instead of a steak, you are given a nice piece of paper which sophisticatedly describes what sort of steak it is, how it's cooked, how delicious it is, etc. etc. The question is, what would you prefer? A description in the most sophisticated or a steak? And the answer here is obvious, I think. So the device which I made, it doesn't describe anything. It doesn't explain anything. But it just simply makes its user into sort of a superhuman. It gives the user an ability to produce and perceive ultrasound optimal for echolocation and by means of that make his your own judgments and decisions. The device makes it possible for a user to distinguish between sizes on objects, whether the object is big or small, between texture also, whether the object is made of something hard like metal or something soft like cushion. It makes it possible to perceive the space around, whether the user is in a room, whether this room is small or large, whether it's a corridor or an open space. And also, it makes it's po it makes it possible to perceive the movement, the speed of moving objects, how quickly they move, what's the direction of movement also. The flip side of all that is time. My device requires learning. And how much time will it take for the brain to accommodate this information, to rewire itself by means of neuroplasticity uh, to use these audio clues for visual representation? This question is open. I don't know, and research hasn't been done. But the preliminary data is quite promising because after 10 minutes, a user could tell the difference between soft and hard objects, could feel the space around, and could uh, truthfully uh, perceive the movement, the speed and vector.